Good morning, everyone. This is True Vine, Prophetess Catherine's. So, you guys, today I have a prophetic um, audio, devotional audio that I would like to come up here and share with you guys. Um, it is uh, the verse of Daniel 6, passage 6, 16. Okay. Now, um, the Holy Spirit have given this passage to me and today I would like to come up and share an audio topic of um, God save those who are faithful to him and completely trusted in him yeah first though, I will read the passage okay then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions um, now the king spoke and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom those servers continually, he will deliver thee. So you guys, in this passage, okay, it is um, obviously everyone is familiar of um, the um, Bible stories of Daniel's in the lion dens, right? So Daniel was the victim of conspiracy. The king, um, Darius, was um, conned by his top official and now found himself um, being forced to um, issue an arrest on his um, trusted close official for over 80 plus years. So now he found himself doing something that he did not want to do, right? However, because the law have been made by um, the king, Darius himself, he have um, nowhere out but to arrest Daniel, who was caught in the very act, um, violating the king latest um right law in his own home upstairs on his knee praying to his god and just as he has always done now as you know um in those time um king Darius, i believe were um uh forbidden right or others to worship any other god except the king so um you know, uh, when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had window in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He get down on his knee and often pray three times a day and gave thanks to the Lord. And um, so what happened is that... Um, the official, right, came and arrested Daniel. And um, here you see in the verse, O king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within 30 days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lion? So he is speaking of, right, the um, what would happen if you uh, worship any other god? And so King Darius answered, The thing stand fast according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. So then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of exile from Judah, pay no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but make his petition three times a day, right here in this um, so it's pretty much talking in this passage, right, that um, he eventually got arrested, right? Um, so what what did Daniel do, right, after this happened to him? Um, would, would he be under the distress, depressed, or despair at all? You may ask your question. You know, most of us will, right? You'll face with some kind of anxiety of 
this pretty fearful event. When Daniel became aware of the conspiracy, okay, that prayer was outlaw under penalty of death. The thing that he does, he continued in his um, former habit, he still continued to pray. Not only that, but he continued to also see God as good and worthy um, of thanks. He got down on his knee three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before the Lord anyway. And um, just as he had previously done. Uh, what if God doesn't answer your prayer, you might ask? Well, in this case, he doesn't answer in the way you had hoped. Daniel was thrown into the den of lions, right? The Lord didn't intervene. Look at the quiet confidence of Daniel, though. He was not shaken by it all, right? Um, he wasn't shaken by the perspective of facing hungry lion. Um, so he doesn't seem to lose confidence in the Lord at all. And Daniel make no complaint. In fact, based on the record we have in the text before us, Daniel doesn't say anything at all. He didn't speak a word in his own defense. Daniel doesn't speak until here you see in verse 21. Might we learn nothing from Daniel here? Um, so he was in the biggest crisis of his life yet. He refused to speak to anyone but God. So um, then the king commanded, right? Uh, see here in verse Daniel 6 to 16. Then the king commanded and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God whom you serve continually deliver you. Daniel was quietly, confidently in his God, right? He continues to pray, but... Um, but Daniel Christus also got the king praying here. Darius was so desperate um, that uh, he also starting to pray with Daniel. <laughs> How many of us only seek the Lord when our circumstances are desperate? Obviously, the king was in desperate need. So, um, so um, he discovered through his circumstances that he wasn't enough in spite of all the distress, in spite of setting his mind to deliver Daniel. Here we're talking about King Darius. In spite of his labor, you know, to the sun went down trying to rescue his friend and all that, he could not come up with anything. He could do nothing. So at the end of himself, he finally offered a wish. We might even call it a prayer to Daniel's God. So I guess since he was the one offering this prayer, it wasn't legal <laughs> because he was the king, right? He desired to deliver, right, to rescue, but he had acknowledged that he was unable to bring about the desired deliverance for his friend. And if any rescue was to come to Daniel, it must be from Daniel's God, to whom Daniel's faithfully prayed to. So the king appears to Daniel's God in desperation. As the very last resort, Daniel prayed constantly before the crisis as a set of habit three times daily. For Daniel, prayer was not a tool for crisis management, but it is a rhythm of relationship. Right, we can learn here from both King Darius and from Daniel. Right, uh, it shows us that even if we gain all earthly power, here you see King Darius as a king, he's a powerful king. But if you gain all earthly power, something are still out of our hands, we are not ultimately in control. And sometimes we even set ourselves up for foolish decisions right out of pride and we have to suffer the consequences of those decisions so ultimately we are not enough we need outside help something is bigger something something that outside of ourselves circumstances can show us our need and drive us to our, our need 
um, but Daniel show us a better way. Daniel live above his circumstances. He every day with um, he started every day right with an acknowledgement to the Lord. All right, God, and he is not that in himself. He is not enough. Right, that he is needy sinner daily in need of God amazing grace. And God delights to give grace to sinner who ask him in humbly manner. And he went back to God throughout his busy day. Daniel showed us that spending time, regularly time, enjoying having this relationship with the um with Severian God of history, right? frees us from being reactionary, overreactive to our circumstances. So when our circumstances are staring us in the face, right, the depressing on us, pressing on us, right, doom and gloom, but when we arise from bowing at the feet of the most almighty God, we gain, right, perspective on those same circumstances, right? Um, awaiting his, so faithfully serve his service to God. Daniel 6, 16, then the king commanded and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually deliver you. What? What commendation from the king? He knew that Daniel served his God, right, continually. The king knew that Daniel served him and his kingdom faithfully. He intended to set him free over his um, whole kingdom because he was faithful and no, and served with no faults, served faithfully in perfection, right? And was regard to the kingdom uh, very um, valuable, right? Royal service for over 80 years. Um, the king knew that he was serving his God. Daniel was obeying God's command through Jeremiah, all right? Here we see in Jeremiah 29, 7, but seek the way of God. Uh, welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for its welfare you will find your welfare Daniel seek the welfare of Babylon he was serving his Lord right we are all called to be minister full-time servant of the Lord Christ whatever you do business owner, manual laborer, food handler, any kind of job, right? Either you're a student, um, whatever it is look like to you, right? Work heartily as for the Lord and not for man. There is understand that Daniel was serving his God continually as he was serving Babylon with integrity. Daniel 6.16, then the king commanded and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lord that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. The deal was sealed. No one could now intervene either for or against Daniel, save the Lord himself alone, right? So the deceitful official, right, eventually got what they deserve and um, they reap what they sow anyway and um, nothing could be changed. So um, here also, we're not going to cover 6 to six to 18, but that is pretty much just talking about, right, our, the faithful 
honest faithfulness of Daniel that you see, you know, even in time of danger, he continued to remain faithful and trusted in the Lord himself alone. And um, eventually God did turn up and saved him from he sent the angel to close um, the mouth of a lion, of the lions, the hungry lions, as we all know, right? So it seems like a happy ending to Daniel speaking. So that's just the lesson for today, really, that God will turn up to save those that are that serve Him faithfully, that loves Him and have relationship with Him, right? Who are not afraid to stand with him when dangers are there this is what this passage is speaking of i believe and um yes so you guys um that is for me and um glories be to the father the son and the holy spirit thank you lord for this verse of encouragement to you know build and grow our faith in him once again Okay, you guys, thank you for listening. Bye.